Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and these are what I think are the best background commander matchups. I sort of poo-pooed on backgrounds a little bit when they came out in Battle for Baldur's Gate. I don't love that they're shoehorning more stuff into the command zone personally. However, I am a deck builder, so I should be able to come up with some interesting matchups here. I actually got called out by one of my patrons on the Discord, and I think I deserved it because I was probably not putting in the effort to finding good matchups here that I should have just because I wasn't the hugest fan of the mechanic. So I thought, you know what? I will go through, pull out a bunch of really great matchups to give some ideas to build some decks around these if you actually do like the background mechanic. And I'm going to try to not copy any, right? Obviously, there are some that will work with several different commanders. I'm only going to use each background and each background commander once. And I'm going to start out with Alora, Merry Thief, and Haunted One. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think Alora Mary Thief is a really great ninja tribal commander if you're looking for another option that isn't Eureka, which a lot of people probably wouldn't even consider to be a casual commander, Alora Mary Thief, if you have a black background, will make a really great ninja tribal commander, I think. Two and a blue halfling rogue, three, two. Whenever you attack, up to one target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. Of course, that works great with ninjutsu for multiple reasons, right? Because it gives you an option to have an unblocked creature to ninjutsu in, but also if your ninjas are already in play, most of them have abilities where they want to be connecting with your opponent but then also return that creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step, which is, again, something you want to be doing with your ninjas. You want to be constantly returning them to your hand so that you can ninjutsu them out again. Now, the background here, Haunted One, two and a black background, commander creatures you own have. When this creature becomes tapped, it and other creatures you control that share a creature type with it each get plus two plus oh and gain undying until end of turn. So this is not the, like the best match ever. I needed black. There wasn't any other black ones I thought that were better fits. However, our commander has an attack trigger and when it attacks, obviously it's going to be tapped. So it's going to get plus two plus O oh, and undying. So we don't have to worry about our commander dying if we need to attack with it to get that attack trigger. Also, our commander is a rogue. I mean, it's not a ninja, unfortunately, but it is a rogue. So we could also throw some rogues into this deck because, of course, blue black rogues is a great tribe and also fits with the sort of unblockable theme because a lot of those rogues want to be getting in for damage as well. So you could also throw some rogues in here as an added bonus. Next up, we have Abdel Adrian Gorian's Ward with Candlekeep Sage. So Abdel Adrian is four and a white human warrior, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permanents you control until it leaves the battlefield. Create a one, one white soldier creature token for each permanent exiled this way. This is a really powerful ability. And the reason I partnered it with Candlekeep Sage is because whenever this creature enters or leaves the battlefield, you get to draw a card and we're going to want our commander to be leaving and entering the battlefield lots, right? Every time your commander ETBs, you're going to exile a bunch of stuff, get a bunch of soldier tokens until your commander leaves play again. So of course, we want to be blinking our commander. Every time we blink our commander, it will leave the battlefield. All that stuff that was exiled will come back. Then our commander will come back. We'll exile that stuff again or different stuff. And then of course, every time we're blinking our commander and it's ETBing, we'll get to draw a card. Whenever this creature enters or leaves the battlefield, draw a card. So if you blink your commander, you're going to get to draw two cards and then you can just continually be blinking your commander over and over and over again and creating this giant army of soldiers right if you just think about a yorian in this deck you can just keep having the yorian come back in exile your commander then your commander will come back exile the yorian you're drawing cards you're creating tokens this seems like a really good matchup to me next up we got wilson refined grizzly with cult of the absolute and wilson is obviously a fantastic voltron commander and cult of the absolute really wants to be attached to a voltron commander a lot of the backgrounds are only affecting your commander so a lot of them will fit in voltron themes and there's not a lot of actual background commanders that are voltron commanders which that to me is what sort of held back a lot of these backgrounds is they all sort of just affect your commander and a lot of times these commanders you don't really want to be attacking with them or doing anything like that with them this is the one that actually fits one in a green bear warrior two two this spell can't be countered that's great vigilance reach and trample and ward two that's a whole lot of abilities and then of course with with the Cult of the Absolute, it's also going to get plus three, plus three, Flying, Death Touch, and Ward, Pay Three Life. So the wards will stack here. In order for our opponents to target our 
commander, they will have to pay two and also three life. And then on top of that, our commander is going to be flying death, touch, vigilance, reach, and trample, and a five, five. Also, your cult of the absolute can come out on turn one. Your Wilson can come out on turn two. So you can get to work really quickly with this. But of course, the downside here is at the beginning of your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a creature. We don't want to sacrifice our commander. So that's the part you're going to really want to build around. I think you don't even need to build around the Voltron strategy that much because just with these two cards, you have a giant flying scary creature with a ton of abilities that your opponents are going to have a tough time dealing with. Most of the deck here, I think, would be like creating tokens or something, like throwing stuff into play, like an Awakening Zone, for example. Just give me that creature token that I can then sacrifice to my Cultus of the Absolute. So you would be in a bit of a sacrifice theme here, right? Black and green is really good at that. I think it's a really interesting match where you're sort of in a Voltron theme, but also a sacrifice theme. Next up, we have Gut, True Soul, Zealot, and Agent of the Iron Throne. So Gut is two and a red Goblin Shaman. Two, two, whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature or an artifact. If you do, create a 4-1 Black Skeleton Creature Token with Menace. That's tapped and attacking. An Agent of the Iron Throne is two and a black background. Commander creatures you own have whenever an artifact or a creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. Each opponent loses one life. This is a card that can go in a ton of decks, by the way. This is one of those backgrounds that I think is going to go in the 99 of a lot of decks because any deck that's sacrificing artifacts or creatures is going to want it. This includes treasure tokens, right, guys? So this is going to go in a lot of decks, I think. Rakdos Colors, I think, is good here in this sort of sacrifice theme, whether it be creature or artifact. And of course, whenever we attack, whether it be with our commander or something else, we sacrifice an artifact. That will trigger our Agent of the Iron Throne. Each opponent will lose one life. And then we get that skeleton token, which also, if it happens to die, I mean, it's only a 4-1. It has menace, so our opponents will have to double block if they want to kill it. But if it dies, that's okay, too. We're going to drain some more life. So I think this is a really good matchup here. Next up, we have Barocus Party Leader with Folk Hero. And I think a lot of people have figured this one out already. Barocus is a three and a black orc 2-4, but it is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard for fulfilling that party mechanic, obviously. That's where you want to go with this. Whenever Barocus attacks, defending player loses X life, and you create X treasure tokens, where X is the number of creatures in your party. That's pretty darn good. Now, why do you want Folk Hero? Well, it's a one and a white background. Commander creatures you own have whenever you cast a spell that shares a creature type with this creature. Draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. And of course, your commander is an orc, cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. Mostly the party mechanic ones there that we're worrying about. So you're going to make a party deck with this. And of course, black and white are good colors for that. It's very easy to get a lot of clerics, rogues, warriors, and wizards in the black and white colors. And every time you cast one, you're going to draw a card. So pretty obvious matchup there for that one. Next Next up, Srivis Nightmare Speaker, and I partnered it with Cloakwood Hermit, which I think people might think is maybe a little weird. However, I think it actually is a good match. So Srivis is three and a black snake cleric warlock. Very interesting creature type there. It's a three, three and has tap, sacrifice another creature or an artifact. So there's a lot of backgrounds and backgrounds of commanders with sort of sacrifice effects, and there is a lot of matchups you can do there. This one fits particularly well with Cloak of the Hermit, I think, because for each opponent, you mill a card, right? So you're milling a card for each opponent. Then return that card from your graveyard to your hand unless that player pays three life. So what happens here is you got three opponents. For each of them, you're going to mill cards. You're going to mill three cards. And then each of those cards, you can then return to your hand, which of course is fantastic because it's essentially drawing three cards unless all of those opponents each choose to pay three life. So if two of them pay the life and one of them doesn't, then you get the one card back, right? Works great with Cloak of the Hermit, I think, because at the beginning of your end step, if a creature card was put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, create two tapped 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens. So this is creating tokens. It could go on a lot of the other token commanders, I think. I thought it was best fit here because you're putting stuff into your graveyard, right? If you mill those cards, if you get one creature out of it, which you likely will, that is a creature card hitting your graveyard from anywhere. So you're going to get those two tapped 1-1 one, one green squirrels at your end step. And of course, you can use those as sack fodder for your commander's ability, right? So you can just rinse and repeat with this ability over and over and over again. If you have some untappers here, because you're getting two of those tokens, you can very easily have an untapper like a thousand year elixir and do this two times per turn. And you're really either going to be filling your hand with those cards that you're milling or draining your opponents for a whole ton of life. I think this is a really great matchup. So next up, we got Halson, Emerald, Archdruid. And there are a couple token commanders here and a couple token backgrounds. I tried not to double up. I wanted to match up the ones that I thought worked best. And I matched up Halson with Inspiring Leader because you're just going to be in a really sort of 
stompy beater theme here, right? Three and a green elf druid, two, four. Pay one until end of turn. Target token you control becomes a green bear creature with base power and toughness, four, four, in addition to its other colors and types. And of course, inspiring leader, two and a white background. Commander creatures you own have creature tokens you control get plus two, plus two. So of course, now we can turn any token we control into a six, six bear. That's pretty incredible. Doesn't even have to be a creature token. We can turn a clue or a food token into a 6-6 six, six bear. That is terrifying. Only one mana, so we got four food tokens kicking around. We can turn for only four mana, all of them into six, six creatures. So I know you're probably going to be in a smash face theme with Halson anyway. So I thought Inspiring Leader was the best match with him. With Jalhira, Friend of the Forest, I went with Feywild Visitor, right? And I thought, you know, I don't want to just do white green token themes with all of them because there's already a lot of white green token commanders. I thought a blue green token theme would be a little more interesting. So two and a green human elf druid. 2-3. Tokens you control have tap add a green mana. And of course, again, doesn't matter if it's a creature token, can be any token. And Feywild Visitor is two in a blue background. Commander creatures you own have whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player. You create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. And I thought this was the best fit here. There, there's a lot of directions you can go here. So first off, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, which means for each player you can get 1-1 one, one fairy dragon. Dragons, right? If you attack three players and you hit them, you get those fairy dragons. Of course, they're tokens, so they don't count towards this ability because it's only non-token, but it's very easy to get those cheap flying creatures into play. Just think of an Edric deck, right? And an Edric would probably go in this deck. Edric decks, whatever they're doing, that's what you're going to want to do here. And you can really go off with this, I think. You could really make a high-powered deck here. Big time high-powered deck, in my opinion. Just a really ridiculous go-wide strategy. Put a lot of those cards that you would put in an Edric deck into this a lot of the when i connect with my opponents i get to draw cards like coastal piracy and biden athasa untap my lands with nature's will you really could i think make a very high powered deck with this background combination next up we have val candle key researcher and raised by giants and this is just a funny one i thought heck why not give this a shot raised by giants of course commander creatures you own have base power and toughness 10 10 and are giants in addition to their other types so again this just feels like i want to do a voltron strategy with my commander but they're there isn't a whole lot of these background commanders that fit a Voltron strategy, so I thought a funny, interesting way would be to combine it with Val, three and a blue human wizard, two, three, with vigilance. Tap, add an amount of colorless, equal to Val Candle Keep Researcher's toughness. This mana can't be spent to cast spells from your hand. So this is going to make it so that your commander will tap for 10 colorless mana, okay, which is incredible, of course. However, you can't use it to cast spells from your hand. So that would be what you build your deck around. You would already do that, right? If you were building a Val deck, you would be building your deck around I want to cast stuff from my graveyard or from other areas, maybe from the top of my library. You could use a future site here or anything that allows you to cast stuff from the top of your library. There are lots of effects like that in Simic Colors and then just I tap to add 10 mana. You know, if you have that future site, you can cast something off the top of your library, just use some of the colorless mana that you just added and then you can keep going, right? You can keep casting stuff off the top of your library with the colorless mana that you just added and of course you can do untapping. There's a lot of shenanigans you can get into here as well. So I thought that would be a fun, interesting combination. All right, I got Durnan of the Yawning Portal with Passionate Archaeologist. And Durnan is one that a lot of people weren't excited about because it is fairly specific in what it's doing. Three and a green, a human warrior, three, three. When Durnan attacks, look at the top four cards of your library. Now, if you just stop right there, what that means is our commander has to attack, right? It has to be whenever Durnan attacks. So you would have to build around that part, right? And that's part of the reason why this commander, I think, is, you know, people aren't so excited because he's just a vanilla 3-3, so you got to have to attack with him, have him not die. You're going to look at the top four cards of your library. You may exile a creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may cast it. That spell has undaunted. So I like the wording there of for as long as that card remains exiled. So that means your commander does not even have to be in play, right? You can just get a bunch of triggers off your commander, and then if it dies, you have four or five cards in exile. They're creatures. They have have Undaunted, which of course means they cost one less to cast for each opponent. And of course, Passionate Archaeologist, one in a red background, commander creatures you own, have whenever you cast a spell from exile, this creature deals damage equal to the spell's mana value to target opponent. So of course, you are going to want your commander on the battlefield before you start going off with this, but when you do, you can really go 
going nuts here, right? And gruel colors is pretty good for the exile tribal thing. There's a lot you can do with that as well. But as long as you have your commander on the battlefield, all those cards that you've had exiled, you can now start casting them at a reduced cost and really go nuts and start throwing some damage around. Next up, I got Lazel Vlacus Champion, and I decided to partner with Master Chef. And again, Lazel is doing the counters thing, right? Two and a white, Geth Warrior 3-3. Three, three. If you would put one or more counters on a creature, a planeswalker you control, or on yourself, put that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. So obviously there is a lot you can do with the whole counters thing. I thought Master Chef was the best one. It is a little boring. Two and a green background, commander creatures you own have. This creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it and other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them so you're just in a selesnia counters theme right which is not super exciting there's a lot of support there as well if i was to give another suggestion a more interesting one it would be clan crafter one in a blue background commander creatures you own have pay to and sacrifice an artifact put a plus one plus one counter on this creature and draw a card so again you're doing the counters thing it's a sacrifice artifact theme which i think would be a little more interesting right Right. You're in a white and blue sacrifice artifact theme. I think that would be neat. So you could do a little bit of artifacts, a little bit of counters. You're drawing cards. You're only putting the counters on your commander, though, which is not as great. I actually like Clan Crafter even better with Lulu Loyal Holy Fant. Three and a white elephant angel. Three, two with flying. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on each tapped creature you control, then untap them. So a lot you can do here again i thought clan crafter was the best fit because you're going to sacrifice an artifact so that is a permanent you control leaving the battlefield it's also doing the plus one plus one counter thing so you can do a whole bunch of that as well you're in a white blue sacrifice artifact theme which is pretty interesting a really fringe way you could go with this is modular because there are artifacts that you want to be sacrificing that are also dealing with the plus one plus one counter thing so that's kind of an interesting way because lulu is untapping creatures there's also some stuff you can do there right there this is probably the one that is the most open-ended because you have permanence leaving the battlefield you have plus one plus one counters and you're untapping your creatures so there's a lot you can do there i will also throw out the suggestion of guild artisan with lulu one in a red background commander creatures you own have when this creature attacks a player if no opponent has more life than that player you create two treasure tokens so your commander has flying that's really important it's going to be really easy for you to get in for damage you don't have to do damage you just have to attack but of course you don't want your commander to die so you attack attack the player that has the most life, not including you though, only your opponents, right? So you look at your opponents, whoever has the most life out of your opponents, doesn't matter if you have the most life, you're not included in this equation. Just look at your opponents, whichever one has the most life, you attack them, you get two treasure tokens. And of course you can just sack those treasure tokens to cast something on your second main phase. And that will be a permanent you control leaving the battlefield. So that will trigger your commander. So it's just very easy with this combination to get the trigger on your commander. And then the rest of the deck, you can just do okay well i'm going to put creatures in here that i want to be putting counters on creatures that i want to be untapping all that good stuff right so that's a very interesting matchup as well so there you go i know i was a little hard on the backgrounds but there's some suggestions for you guys to make some interesting background commander decks let me know what matchups you guys are trying in the comments below but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in